Agora TV. The world is thinking. Well, you have to bear in mind, you know, gravity, you know, it's one of the fundamental forces of the universe and the, the idea of taking that away. Mm -hmm. No one had been up there. Nobody knew what would happen. There was fears that um, the, the heart wouldn't be able to circulate the blood, that the blood would sort of churn in place without like the resistance of gravity. People feared that the eyeball would change shape and the pilot would be sort of incapacitated because his, his focus would be so far, far see, off yeah. that everything would be fuzzy. The lens would yeah, they be they were afraid that, uh, that the blood might not coagulate. They were concerned that the vestibular system, because you have these little bones, little tiny calcifications in your inner ear, and normally those are resting on the bottom of the inner ear. In zero gravity, they're floating and they're pinging around, which does make you feel um, nauseous. But they didn't. They thought it would create this just complete incapacitation. They they had mm -hmm. no idea. So they started out by sending up. Uh, it was 1949. The the, the uh, Albert, Albert one. A little rhesus monkey on a um, on uh, the end of a big rocket, mm -hmm. just to wire him up for. Uh, he, he was anesthetized, but he was uh, heart rate and and blood pressure, breathing. And it was like just sort of putting him up. Yeah, seems like he's still alive. You know, there was this ter this era of tremendous hand wringing, mm -hmm. not just the phys physical stuff, but we were talking about before this the psychological. What will happen? Will will the person just lose their mind? Yeah. And yeah, and it went, this went on for years. Lots of, and they started doing the testing on the, you know, the uh, the parabolic flights where they'd have like 22 seconds of, uh, of zero gravity, and so they would be doing um, there, these papers like uh, testing whether or not the initialization of micturition, could you pee, um, <laughs> swallowing, you know, would you, would you, could you eat or would the pieces of food float up the back of the pharynx and into the nose and would you choke? There was. Just you name it. Legitimate it, questions. Legitimate really questions. Right. Nobody knew if like would would peristalsis work? Would you be able to swallow? Or did you need gravity? Uh, and in fact, some of this stuff is. It, it, um, I mean, most of it was fairly minor. But there's things like um, the human bladder. Uh, the way that you know that it's time to go empty it is because there are stretch receptors, and as as you know, the fluid fills up on the bottom, it activates these stretch receptors, which triggers your brain, says, hey, go to the loo. Mm -hmm. Well, in zero gravity, you don't, have, you don't have gravity. You've got just surface tension, so the liquid is clinging all around the inside of the organ. So it doesn't trigger mm -hmm. those stretch receptors until the it's bladder totally is full. so full that it's pressed the urethra shut, and now you need to haul out the self-catheterization kit. So it's actually a really, you know, the, the astronauts have to kind of be potty trained they have to be told by the guy. There's a guy. He's the potty trainer at the Johnson Space Center. Like, okay, guys, you're going to go to the bathroom every two hours whether you need to or not. It's like a road trip with kids, you know.